tips. Yeah, tips make more sense. Folk fest tips. Hacks are usually things that are unnecessarily complex and do the job of something that you already have something to do that job. Yeah. Okay, folk fest tips. I I say have a big backpack, changes of clothes, extra socks, rain gear, alcohol, uh, sunscreen, don't bring alcohol, drugs of various types. <laughs> Bug spray, make sure that you have lots of water, make sure you're eating and drinking enough to sustain yourself in whatever weather. You know what? I think that's a good life tip. Yeah. Eat and drink enough to sustain yourself. Yeah. All right. I think that's important. Well, that's why people come here. They come here for the hot tips. The life hacks? The life hacks. (laughs) Well, welcome everyone to a very special episode of I Love This, You Should Too. My name is Indy. Did you know a two-liter pop bottle top can be used to tie your bread bag together? Randawa. I saw one like that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's That's, definitely a thing. There's so many things that do that much more easily. Bread clip. The clip that it even comes with if you buy bread from a store. It does come with something that does that specific job. (laughs) Oh, and with me is my lovely co-host, Samantha Hot Hacks Randawa. Hot hacks sounds alarming. That's going to be the name of my blog. <laughs> yeah. I think this comes up on the show too often, but I hate life hacks. I know They're you They're always do. terrible. They're always terrible. Yeah, you're right. They are complicated for no reason. You send me your life hacks, everyone. Okay. Let's not waste any more time on nonsense and let's get into it. Because today we are doing a preview of the 2024 Edmonton Folk Music Festival. Yes. Samantha's been going for 30 plus years? 30 plus years, yeah. I've been going for six, seven? Six, six or seven, yeah. We're back. And thanks to our benefactors, this time we're not going on a press pass. We're going on a press pass to Calgary, but our benefactors, Rose Ginther (laughs) and Eric Fadden, are uh, sending us there. Yes. And if you want to be a benefactor, we will do anything if you uh, pay for it. Yeah. If we'll you... go anywhere if you pay for it. That's very true. If you want your tiny uh, high school musical covered on this... No, actually, maybe not that. I feel like you'd hate that. I've done enough high school productions when I was a <laughs> drama teacher. Um, but yeah, pitch us, pitch us your event. Or we'll if see. you pay us we'll do whatever movie because remember this used to be a movie podcast yeah and it will be in a couple weeks again we'll be back don't worry for september but but... we will do a movie of your choosing if you pay us to do it yeah i'm into that i'll do an earnest movie i don't care ew isn't he like oh no maybe i'm thinking of urkel (laughs) well if you have a feature length urkel movie somehow i will also cover that okay or a Stefan Urkel, either way. Oh, but we are talking about the 45th annual Edmonton Folk Music Festival this week. Thank you for getting me back on task. <laughs> so we're going to go over a couple of artists, a few artists that we are each excited to see, play a little bit of their music. Maybe there'll be more actual tips along the way, <laughs> but we are excited to go. And then in a couple of weeks, once it is over, we will release the episode we recorded at the festival yeah absolutely and i'm uh i'm excited to see uh this interesting lineup this year i should add that folk festival in edmonton runs from thursday august 8th to sunday august 11th and apparently there are uh single day tickets available for thursday and friday still Oh, hopefully they'll still be there when this comes out. When this comes out, we might be in Calgary doing that folk fest. I think we will be. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. I'm going to start off with a another no surprise big name one to start off, and then I'll get probably more obscure as we go. The artists I am probably most excited to see this year are Black Pumas. And you know them because I've been playing them around the house a lot. I do like them. They are an American band based in Austin, Texas, led by singer-songwriter Eric Burton. Not Eric Burton, who from The Animals, who I also love. (laughs) And uh, the guitarist and producer Adrian Quesada. 
And they do a lot of kind of um, psychedelic soul, which okay. is the type of music, maybe my favorite. I don't know. Something I really love. But usually that is stuff from the 70s. And I love all that. I love my soul and my funk and the psychedelic soul specifically. And the Black Pumas are really tapping into that. And of modern bands doing this, I think they're probably my favorite. So the singer Eric grew up singing in church and did musical theater and stuff. And then he was kind of just traveling around the Western United States and busking and studying music in New Mexico and eventually got to Austin where he was just a busker. Quesada, the guitarist and producer, he was actually in this band called Grupo Fantasma, who are like real solid. They're like a Latin funk band. They've been around forever. They've been making music for 20 plus years or something. And they do kind of retro, funk, R&B, psychedelic stuff, but also with like a Latin flair to it. So their stuff is really good. But then they got together and decided to do this project, and it is fantastic. Their first album, which was self-titled, got a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist, and now they have a second album out as well. And for the song that I'm going to share with you, let's go with the big hit. This song called Colors was very well played and well known, and for good reason, because I love it too. different this year because this year a lot of the artists I'm most excited to see are playing on the main stage. Mm -hmm. I'm usually a real side stage kind of guy. You are, yeah. That's why they call me Side Stage Randawa. That's what they're always calling you. (laughs) So what do you think about them? I like them. I think they're going to be a really good, um, like they're another band that will translate well to the main stage Mm -hmm. kind of feeling and uh, I think it's going to be a fun, uh, upbeat show. He is one of my favorite current vocalists. I love his voice. He does such great work. They do a cover of uh, Chapman's Fast Car. Right. And it is, I know everyone covers that song. It's a very popular cover. They are now my favorite cover of it because he does a real like homage to Tracy Chapman's style of singing. He does a really good job of imitating her voice. He like imitates it, but also does his own little thing with it. It's, Mm -hmm. It's a really good version of it. So you can check that out too. But that is Black Pumas. When are they playing this weekend? They are playing Thursday, August 8th at 930 on the main stage. Oh, right at the beginning. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday night. night. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you can see them then. And uh, I believe that is one of the nights that there are still tickets for. So if you fall in love with them, you can come see the show. And I'll see you there. All right, Sam, who are you excited to see? I am really excited to see Dawes. Right. Dawes is a American folk rock band from Los Angeles. Um, it is composed of brothers Taylor and Griffin Goldsmith. And uh, they kind of started in um, a punk rock band, a post-punk band. Oh, post-punk. Very different than punk. Okay, sorry. Post-punk <laughs> band called Simon Dawes. And then uh, they kind of moved on from that band and became Dawes, which is more of a folk rock sound. Um, I know of this band only because I'm a big fan of Mandy Moore. And uh, Taylor is married to Mandy Moore. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I... I kind of looked at the list and didn't really see anything and then I kind of saw Dawes on the list and I was like I think I know who they are and I have kind of been listening to them over the last couple of weeks and I am actually really excited to see them um they have a really unique sound of like kind of a folk rock bluesy um sound with uh really great harmonies and uh good guitar work um and when they travel um when they tour they have uh, Trevor Meaner 
on guitar as well. So they are a three um, person band. Um, and we are going to listen to Things Happen. So I'm driving on to Oakland for a good look back and a few revisions to my plan of attack. I'd only heard a couple of songs of theirs because I think they are like buddies with Connor Obers, uh, Bright Eyes. Oh, okay. So I think I'd heard something from uh, that he had somewhere, but I'm excited to hear more from them because mm-hmm. I don't know them much at all, but a few people have told me that they are excited to see Dawes. Awesome. Um, so you can see Dawes on Saturday, August 10th at 3.05 p.m. at Stage 6 in a session called Influences with Angie McMahon, Dawes, Rose Cousins, and Tina Deco. And then they are playing a concert on Saturday, August 10th at 6.55 p.m. on the main stage. And we're going to be at the main stage more this year than we ever have in the I past. I don't know when we've ever been at the main stage this much. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, Indy, who you got next? Next, we are going to get a little more upbeat and dancey with La Misa Negra which translates to The Black Mass. So La Misa Negra is a band out of Oakland, and they are usually a seven-piece band, so expect a big sound with horns and accordion and guitar. And they do a lot of kind of um, Afro-Latin fusion. There's a lot of cumbia. The, uh, the Colombian music is kind of the bass, but there's a lot of other influences coming in there too. A bunch of the band, I think, used to play in metal bands. Oh. And they say, like, oh, you can hear that sound. Like, I don't hear it so much, but maybe I need to listen to more of them. And they also say they have a lot of hip-hop influence. So I'm not hearing the hip-hop and the metal as much, but maybe that's just because I'm not terribly versed in cumbia music. So maybe if you mix cumbia with metal, this is what you get. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of uh, mambo-inspired style in there as well. But from my understanding is they put on big, wild live shows. So from what I hear, I've never seen them live, but from what other people say who have seen them live, they're like, you need to go to this. It's going to be a a spectacle. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited for that. And there's just not a huge amount of music to dance to at the folk fest. Right. There there is definitely some, but a lot of it is more subdued stuff that maybe you're not jumping around as much. So this is a good opportunity to do that. So we are now listening to their song Acosadora from their self-titled 2017 album. Well, that just sounds like it's going to be an incredible show. That's going to be a party. Absolutely. That's just everyone's going to be dancing. They better be. Although Edmonton, one of the least dancey places around. Yeah. It's always hard for people to get uh, the audience up on their feet. And I always want to talk to them all beforehand and say, like, look. We are not a dancey people. Well, it's because usually the people camped out in front of the stage yeah. have been there for like eight hours. Yeah. And they're, it's an older crowd it that uh, has trouble getting up and down a lot of the time. <laughs> That's like the, that, that is the truth it's of true. it. It's true. Yeah. So don't feel sad, artists, if uh, we don't get up and dance for you. We will. We will. But Edmonton as a whole will not. Yeah. Um, It's it's too bad, but that's just the way it is. That's the way it is. Yeah. So when are they playing? When is this party going to happen? Well, the first party is going to be Friday night at 10.45 p.m. at the main stage. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're main stage too. They are. They're shutting it down. You're so mainstream now. Man, I'm play- I'm just choosing all the headliners. <laughs> and then you can see them at a session called Neighbors on Saturday, 
afternoon at 3.05 p.m. at Stage 1 with the fantastic Negrito, La Misa Negra, and Orchestra Gold. Oh, man, that's going to be the one for me (laughs) because all three of those are... That that's going to be a good session. Yeah, so uh, a few opportunities to see them and the party that it sounds like they bring with them. I hope that they play the after parties. We don't have oh yeah word of who's at the after parties, but we again will of course go to those after parties, yeah. and that is always a good show. Well, who else you got, Sam? I have Danielle Ponder. She is a former litigator. Uh, She chose to pursue a career in law after her brother received a 20-year sentence due to a three strikes law. And she... That three strikes law is fucking nonsense. Yeah. Uh, She became a tireless advocate for justice in her community. Uh, But music was never far from her heart. And in 2021, she chose to leave her public defender job and uh, follow her heart and release her debut album, Some of Us Are Brave. And uh, it is a really interesting mix of soul, R&B, and something called trip-hop, which I'm sure you know about. I do. <laughs> I like that you said something called trip-hop. I, yeah, you don't listen to any Portishead? Not really, but I do know of Portishead. She is touring around the country. She uh, had her first appearance on television on Late Night with Seth Meyers. And uh, she toured with Marcus Mumford, Amos Lee, St. Paul and the Broken Bones, and Leon Bridges. Oh, so if you are a fan of company. them, yes, you may love Danielle Ponder as well. Uh, this is her song, Some of Us Are Brave. And to those who fear leads them to hate, what a pity to be locked in a place you see me now. I show you. I show you. Well, thanks for sharing that because I haven't listened to her and I'm in Yeah, right away. I don't want to like overstate things, but on the vocals alone, I heard a little Nina Simone. Oh. A little bit... I could tell by your interested. face that you were like, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see her now too. Awesome. Well, we can see her at a session called Sing Out, which I think last episode I talked about the Sunday morning kind of worshipy sounding uh, sessions. Uh, I have a feeling this might be one of those. Uh, at 1235 at stage three, and you can see Black Uma Fulsi International, Danielle yes. Ponder, Eric Bibb with Michael Jerome Brown, and Robert Finley. Oh, that's going to be a, <laughs> good, a good one, one. <laughs> too. Because there's, there's some real good vocalists in that group. Yeah. Ooh, and then fun. you can see her on the main stage uh, Sunday night at 8.15. Wow, well, main stage again. Everyone's we on the main stage. just love the main stage, apparently. <laughs> I think I've sat through three artists on the main stage over all of these years. Yeah. And I think I'm going to be spending all my time there this this year. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, so, yeah, so I'm really excited to see her. Um, and Me too. Kind of, she does have some more, like, upbeat songs. So I think there'll be some dancing, hopefully. And uh, just I think it'll be a really nice vibe. One of those vibe times. Oh, yeah. As the kids say, vibe times. Vibe times. With a Z. Hashtag vibe times. <laughs> I bet that is something. All right. Next, I am going to recommend the band Orchestra Gold. So I know very little about Orchestra Gold. They are hard to find out a lot about. But they have this uh, vocalist named Miriam Diakite, and she is singing mostly in the Bambara language. So their music has Malian, Malayan? Not Malayan from Malaysia, but from the country of Mali. Malian. 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 Yeah. And so they have some traditional Mali music, but then it is definitely mixed predominantly with uh, psychedelic rock. There's a lot of psychedelia in here, so if you like that sort of thing, you're going to love this. If you don't like that sort of thing, you're probably not going to like this (laughs) at all. But they are very danceable, they're very 
sit back on the hill and burn one down and listen to this. That works too. They just released a new album. Like it just came out in the last week or something with a band called Calm Quite Knowing. And I know nothing about that band, but this album just appeared and there's like, no information on it, but I've been listening to that a little bit and it's it's pretty fun as well. But right now we are listening to a song called Konia from their 2023 album Medicine. So can, when can we go jam out to some orchestra gold? Well, you can see them on the main stage. Remember main how stage. like mainstream you are now? If orchestra gold is main sta- is mainstream, then I guess I'm pretty mainstream. <laughs> uh, you can see them Thursday on the main stage at 6.30. And one of the things that I love is when bands come for multiple days and they get to like really experience the festival too so uh you can also see them on friday night in a session called shake your hips uh at stage one at 7 40 p.m and alpha yaya diallo black umafolosi international and orchestra gold will be oh there. that's that's gonna be a fun one too yeah. i've been listening to all of them and yeah that's gonna be good i think the two sessions that you've mentioned those might be my two favorite things to see now from from the mix of people they <laughs> have well, um, I love that Edmonton has an app so we can like schedule everything out. We can see what conflicts we have. We're going to get scheduling right after this, I think. We are. Um, and then you can see them again on Saturday afternoon at Stage 1 at 3.05 p.m. in a session called Neighbors with Fantastic Negrito, La Misa Negra, and Orchestra Gold. That was that other one. <laughs> so I think I think we know where we're going to be quite a few times this festival. <laughs> All right. Who do you have to round out your top three? So my final one is a band that was actually just added recently called The Heavy Heavy. They are from England and they are a rock and roll band. And that's they promise to put the audience into a euphoric fugue state. Oh, no. In its own oh, euphoric sun-soaked though. atmosphere. Oh, which I'm okay. Like, Great. Sounds I will take amazing. that challenge. Amazing. Um, this is a Brighton based band from the UK. They have a sound of their favorite records. That's how they kind of go through their musical process. And um, it's a reverb drenched collision of psychedelia, blues, acid rock, and sunshine pop. Oh, I might be real into yeah, this. Yeah, I heard this and I was like, I'm not going to tell Andy because I want him to like learn about it on the show but I think you might actually really like them so we are going to listen to Go Down River Gotta say, you're bringing it with the picks. <laughs> I like this as well. I had a feeling you might like this. One. I I don't know how I haven't listened to them, but again, someone else has said like, "Oh, I'm excited to go see the Heavy Heavy," and I was like, oh, "I don't know who they are." Yeah. But I appreciate that if you said this song was from 1968, I'd be like, "Yeah, okay." If you said it was 1976, I'd be like, "Yeah, okay." It's it's kind of timeless. Mm-hmm. It's nostalgic. It's fun. It seems like perfect outdoor sunny day listening music. Absolutely. And that's exactly the feeling that I got when I was listening to it the first time. And I love the idea that they're making records as if they were their own favorite records already. Um, So I think that's pretty cool. You can see the heavy, heavy Saturday afternoon at 425 p.m. on stage three in a session called On the Road Again with Buffalo Nichols and Kim Churchill and the heavy, heavy. Um, you can also see them Sunday uh, afternoon at 12.30 p.m. at Stage 1, along with John Craigie, John and Roy, Kim Churchill, and the Heavy Heavy. And then you can see them Sunday night on the main stage. Main stage, wow. Uh, at 7 p.m. And uh, I'm sure that they will bring a real great show. 
who is not at the main stage this year? Apparently everybody we want to see. All right, well, I'm going to round mine out with an artist named Elisa P. Isaac, usually just referred to as Elisa P. on her music. And she is a a multi-talented person. She is a a Canadian Inuk musician. She's a broadcaster, a documentary filmmaker, an activist, an actress. And if you go to the post office right now, you can get Elisa P. stamps. What? I didn't know that she was that big. She has her own stamp. Seriously? Yeah. That's amazing. So she was a musician and stopped for a while in 99 to pursue a a degree and became a journalist. And she's been making music for many, many years. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm a a longtime fan. I've only recently discovered her music, largely due to one of her new albums, which is a covers album. But she does all of her covers in Inuk. And they sound dramatically different because regardless of where the music is coming from, she's covering like Metallica, for instance. But she's like bringing it down into this really kind of sparse folk music Ah. in in Inuk. So let's listen to her cover of Metallica's The Unforgiven from her album Inuktitut. And the song... I never like to do the, oh, I'm going to butcher this name. I just go through it. And if I got it, I got it. And I'm going to try my best. But this one is is hard because the word is 25 letters long. That's a lot of letters. So the song is called Isumagi Juna Aitai Ungituk. Perhaps. Good job. No, it's not. But uh, the song is a good job. <laughs> Are you familiar with the song she's covering? I feel like I know it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, and so that's the the Metallica one. But ah. on that album, she has so many great covers, like Dreams, uh, the Cranberries, I Want to Break Free, Wish You Were Here. She has some Zeppelin on there. She has some Blondie. So they're big songs, but they sound they sound beautiful. They're sparse mm-hmm. and stripped down and sometimes joyful and sometimes really sad sounding and melancholic, but they're all very interesting. It's rare that someone does a covers album and I'm, and I'm like, wow, that was a great album. But I really like that album of hers and it's inspired me to go check out more of her music. So that's uh, Elisa P or Elisa P. Isaac. Nice. When is she playing? So she is playing on Friday, August 9th at 7.40 p.m. at Stage 6 in a session called Crisis. What Crisis? Oh. Um, and it features Elisa P., Jess Williamson, Rose Cousin, and the Ruin Brothers. And then you can see her Saturday at 11 a.m. at Stage 5 in a session called True North uh, with Abigail LaPelle, Elisa P., and Sammy Volkov. And then you can see her on Saturday, August 10th at 3.05 p.m. in a concert uh, at Stage 3. She's not main stage. She is not main stage. Well, all of these bands who are quite small, a lot of the ones I was talking about and not very well known, Mm -hmm. are on the main stage. But she is currently on Canadian stamps. And she just won a Juno. And she just won a Juno. Like, I'm very surprised by that choice, actually. I thought she would be a main stage person. Yeah. Okay, well, either way, I'm going to be there and I'm excited to see her. Awesome. Yes, she is going to be great. I do have two honorable mentions. Oh, let's hear them. (laughs) So my first one is Rose Cousins. She's an artist from PEI. She's a singer-songwriter who I got really into after seeing her at Folk Fest many, many years ago. Um, And uh, her first three albums I absolutely love. Her first album was If You Were For Me, and she has a song called Edmonton. Mm. Um, There's the Send Off and then We Have Made a Spark, all of which are very beautiful guitar... um, some piano and uh, just like really beautiful lyrics and uh, Rose Cousins 
incredible voice. And then my other was uh, Folk Fest Classic Blue Rodeo. I'm looking forward to seeing them. I have very fond memories of seeing them when really cold Folk Fest wrapped up under a blanket and somehow we were in the front row and we were right underneath the little uh, overhang from the stage. And I just remember like it was such a cozy Folk Fest moment. So I am excited to see Blue Rodeo again, even though I'm not sure that I could name a Blue Rodeo song. <laughs> <laughs> but you've probably seen them multiple times. I probably have because yeah. I feel like they are always at Folk Fest. So um, I'm excited to check out Blue Rodeo again and be like, oh, yeah, I know that song. Oh, yeah, I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Do you have uh, 10 honorable mentions? Not quite 10, but I do have a few. Okay. So one, somebody who was mentioned on some of those sessions was Alpha Yaya Giallo. And he is a guy from Guinea, but is uh, based in Canada and has been for a long time. He does a lot of classical guitar music, but with um, Guinean classical guitar. And I think he sings a bit as well. He himself has won two Juno Awards, or maybe three, and has been nominated like six times. Oh, wow. So he's doing some good work too, and uh, some great guitar music. There's J.D. McPherson who I think might be another one that surprises a lot of people and then they might not know the name, but he does kind of retro rock and roll, rock and billy, 50s R&B style stuff in the style of Little Richard, Fats Domino. So he sounds like he's from like 1958, but he is a guy from Tulsa that is making music now. He also has a Christmas album called Socks, which is very good. So keep that in mind for December. There is Robert Finley, who I talked about a little bit on the Calgary pre-episode because he is going to be playing both festivals. He is a guy who retired from music for several decades oh, wow. and then came back in 2016 and released an album called Age Don't Mean a Thing. He's a classic blues and soul guy, has that great what I expect from a blues musician voice. He has that voice, so he's mm. going to be a lot of fun. Fantastic Negrito also will be playing Calgary, and he does a lot more contemporary blues with a lot more rock influences and has this really good album that came out, I think, two years ago called White Jesus Black Problems. And he's eclectic. A lot of his songs sound very different from other ones, yeah. but he's a lot of fun, too. And then Black Umfolosi, who is a Imbube band, which is um, a type of a cappella music and dancing. So they won't have any instruments and they are all a cappella, but I think there is going to be a lot of dancing as well. So it's a type of a Zulu dance and they have done a lot of big events and they've been around for a long time so they did the expo in seville in 1992 they played at the commonwealth games in 94 so they've done like big international events but ah. over the last like 30 years because i think they formed their first iteration in 1982 oh wow so I'm excited to see that because it's something so different than mm -hmm. what I'm familiar with. I don't really listen to any just acapella music because I only think of like barbershop when I think of just acapella. Oh, yeah. So I'm yeah, excited right. for that. And then to see the dancing that goes along with it. And then sadly, Mokumba, who was the group I was most excited to see in the whole festival, is not coming anymore. But if you just want to listen to some cool music, go check them out too. Mm hmm I believe the Heavy Heavy replaced Makumba. So I better go check them out. Yeah. Heavy Heavy. Maybe I'll love them just as much. Hopefully. Well, that about wraps it up. In a couple of weeks, we are going to release our Calgary episode. And then the week after Edmonton is done, we'll release the episode we record there. I think our audio is going to be a lot better this year because I kind of figured out to live recording. Yes, yeah. I was kind of on the fly last year. Expect a little bit more polish in our sound quality. Let's hope. Um, so we will see you on the hill at the Edmonton Folk Music Festival from August 8th to 11th at Gallagher Park here in Edmonton. Yeah, come say hi if you see us, although yes. you might only know our voices. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we will see you there. Bye, everyone. See you on the hill.